What a day for stocks, man. I had to adjust a lot of positions, had margin calls on multiple accounts, and what I was able to do is roll out and down on puts and close out calls that I sold because all the premium was eaten up. I had to sell 100 shares of Tesla stock to make sure I didn't get margin called and to get out of a margin call. And all said and done, I got out of a lot of positions. I was about to earn about $100,000 for the month of January, and now that's all gone. Uh, I might make about $10,000 for the month of January. I want to get this video out ASAP so you know that you're not alone. We're all losing hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars out here, potentially on paper. May not be completely having to take the losses. I wanted to share a live reaction to just how I'm doing and how, how you're doing. A lot, of, a lot of YouTubers, what they do is they don't talk about what's going on. They might ignore huge red days. We had luckily had an insane reversal. We were down about three, four percent on the spy. Got bought up about uh, afternoon. Same thing on the Nasdaq. So we're gonna dive into the whole market outlook, where I think that we're gonna be going, if we've bottomed or not. We're gonna talk about all that in this video. So if we take a look at the spy, what you're seeing is we dipped all the way down to 420, almost uh, got to that 420.69. I saw the people on Twitter putting in a, a buying order there. So this candle here shows we went all the way down there and we closed uh, almost at uh, 439 here. So we got all the way up and uh, actually went green for the day. Insane amount of volume. Take a look at the volume bar today and the previous day. Now this is a convincing sign of a bottom for two reasons. When we are bottoming, there's accelerating sell-offs. So the, the sell-offs get more rapid, more volatile, more aggressive, and higher volume. Uh, when you get those last few sell-offs, it's called a puke. So that's what the people call it in the financial industry. They call it the puke sell-off, and that's signs of a bottom. When you have real high volume, like we had Friday, and then today, even higher volume, but on reversals. So well, when you have high volume on a reversal, it's a lot more of a signal that, hey, this is likely a bottom. Now, the question is, is it a near-term bottom or is it a true bottom for the coming months? Uh, that, we don't know. We have to see what the Fed says, in all honesty. So the Fed's going to speak Wednesday. It's tough for the Fed to really do anything positive for the market because, you know, they could say, hey, you know, the economy's not doing so good, so we're actually not going to write, we're not going to do any rate hikes in the near term. That would be the best thing, and growth stocks would have a savage rebound on that news, but I think that's highly unlikely. All that's doing is pushing the can down the road again for us to have to have this conversation again and experience aggressive sell offs all over again. So what I think the Fed will do is stick with what they were going to say with doing a rate hike very soon, another one in March, you know, sticking to maybe the two rate hikes in the year of 2022, but nothing, not really changing and, and reversing their stance saying, oh, the economy isn't doing as good as we thought, so we're not going to continue on being as hawkish as we were before. I think it's slim chances. So there's not much the Fed can say to really get us up, but like I said, if it's that previous scenario, then I think that can get us up and confirm the bottom. Let's take a look at the Qs. So the Qs, everyone was talking about, we're gonna have a circuit breaker because we were down 5% on the day. So we went from down 5% to up half a percent. Same idea on the volume candles, really aggressively broke down through the 200 day. The good news for the NASDAQ is we were 18% down from highs. So I have much more faith in the bottoming for the NASDAQ than the SPY because the SPY has gone so long, being so steadily trading up that you know, we're, we're due for a, so, a savage 15%, 20% pullback from highs. And I believe we got down about 13% on the SPY, but uh, the NASDAQ went 18% down from highs. So I have more faith in the NASDAQ actually bottoming than the SPY. Uh, I think that we could, you know, trade sideways and, and slowly start to have a V back up, but I don't see us really making a new bottom on the NASDAQ. Unless Jay Powell comes out and says, yeah, we have five rate hikes this year and they're gonna have a rate hike every single meeting then we go and we make new lows. Tesla stock, we came all the way down, we tested the 200 EMA at 853, we went down to 852 and then bounced back up. We were down 10% on the day at one point, closed the day at 930, which was awesome. I was forced to sell 100 shares at 904 per share, and that was to make sure that I didn't get a margin call, because I already got a margin call uh, on three different accounts, so I had to close a few positions or roll a few positions out. I'll show you that shortly. Uh, again, for Tesla, the good news is that we hit the 200 EMA and we bounced up. A nice hammer candle forming here. High volume, signs of the reversal. Bad news, there's still a gap here from 840 to 850 and we hit, we hit 852. So could we test that? Quite possibly. Also good news is we have this trend line coming up here. So it's likely for us to bottom around 840. Honestly, not likely to go much below 840 as long as this trend holds. We talked about this trend previously. It dates back to COVID. 
trend lines are trend lines. They work up until they don't work. So we're going to have to just follow along and see if this trend line holds. Dating all the way out back to the COVID lows of March 2020, we bounced off that and then never looked back and never hit that trend line ever. So we'll see if it continues to hold or not. We already know the earnings are going to be amazing. It all just kind of depends on the, the tone of the Fed and if there's a war with uh, Russia or not, if, if uh, Putin decides to invade. If that all subsides, then I do see us rotating up and this being a bottom, which is great news for me, probably great news for you. Next, we're taking a look at Affirm. So I'll show you what I had to do with Affirm. Um, I had the 60 strike put. I talked about this. As long as it doesn't drop below 60, I'm good. I had to roll this out from expiring in, in, in mid-February all the way to June 17th. So. I rolled this uh, from the, the 60 strike expiring in February to the 50 strike expiring June 17th, basically meaning that I don't think that a firm will break 50 by June. That's a few months out and because of that I, I collected a small credit. So you know that's one strategy you can use and that's why I talk about how it's great to earn 2% a month using these strategies because what happens is if you do get in trouble, you can roll down and out to give yourself more time to have the stock bottom and come back up. If you just look at a firm, you know, if the, as long as the earnings are still good, there's still earning growth, then I have faith. Uh, if we go into a recession, there's gonna be a lot less people using a firm, obviously, because recession, a lot less money, and people are gonna be afraid to do payments on things. But we went all the way down to 71% from highs. 71% from highs, I don't know about you, that's a nice double bottom as well. We bottomed here just below 50. Today we hit 48 and uh, you know the put I rolled down to was the 50 strike as burned in June. And uh, I'm kind of just banking on earnings being good, pushing us back up to uh, 60 towards 70. And at this point, everything obviously looks bearish. We're going straight down. Um, there's still no signs of true bottoming here. Um, you know, we got a nice, we're turning to head up on the stochastic, which is great. The, the only good the only good sign of bottoming is the hammer candle here uh, pushing up on high volume and uh, the stack, stochastic getting to a bottom turning to head up on the daily but uh, RSI still too low to really say anything um, if we come down to the four hour or the one hour it obviously is going to look a lot better yeah it's going to look a little better but again it all really depends on macro it depends on what the Fed says like I could chart for days but everything still looks like it, it could continue to sell off. About three weeks ago, the uh, net value was over 1.2 million. And just three weeks later, from 1.2 to 800,000, and um, other accounts took massive hits as well, lost hundreds of thousands of other accounts. So, you know, today at one point, this uh, daily PL in this one account said minus 250,000. So to go from it saying minus 250,000 to saying minus 77,000, that's a great, that's a great sign. It was a good reversal, but obviously still down huge. Um, what I ended up doing is, again, like I said, I rolled all of my positions. I had a lot of strangles expiring in the beginning of February, in the middle of February, and I basically rolled all of the put sides down and I kept the calls where they were, letting them expire in February because I don't want to set any calls to sell on these stocks that are already down 50, 60, 70, and 80% from highs. I would like to wait for a bounce to put on new positions. Um, you know, net liquidity dropped to maintenance, so I had to sell 100 shares of Tesla stock. So in this account, we had about 828 before, now we have 728. Uh, yesterday I sold calls on the VIX at about the 3250 strike. All I did is I rolled it to the 35 strike, expiring April 19th. All this means is I don't think the VIX is going to be at 35 in a few months. And if that happens, then this expires worthless. I did 10 contracts and I collected about $3,000 for that. Rivian, I rolled the puts. So initially when I put this uh, trade on, I it was uh, initially when I put this trade on, it was the 70 strike put and it was the 130 strike call. As Rivian had been selling down and going close to in the money, I rolled down to the 65 strike, and then when it got to 65, I rolled down to the 63 strike, and then it fell to the floor today, and I rolled it down to the 50 strike. So what I did each time was I pushed out the date further as I'm rolling down, and that would net out the trade, making, my, uh, making sure that I actually don't even take a loss. As long as, the only thing is I'm tying myself up in the trade longer. So this was only supposed to be a one month trade, now it's gonna be about a four month trade. All in all, to make sure that I, I still collect all the premium I got from the first trade and basically break even. So Rivian on the daily chart, obviously this can just keep going lower depending on the macro environment, but uh, you see this line here, this is where uh, this is where the put is, and uh, this is where the call is expiring. I rolled it down to the 90 strike to collect more money, expiring at the beginning of February. And I know we're, we're really just kind of at this point, 
Rivian could keep falling. The market cap's still big. And you know, if any bad news comes out with Rivian, we could see the sell-off continue. Just is what it is. Any company that isn't currently profitable and making money today is likely to really have challenges in this upcoming environment with you know quanti- with um, with the Fed being much more strict and tighter and not not making an easy money market anymore. You have to assume that any company that's currently not making money and profitable is going to continue to suffer. So the hopes we're really having is that this was the bottom or that if there is another bottom coming, then it's not going to be much more much lower. You know, if we're looking at Rivian, we can't even look at this one because we could you could just say if you looked at Rivian, you could say, oh, but it's down uh, 69 percent from highs. Yeah, but this whole spike was nonsense to me, in my opinion. And for it to ever really be valued at more than Lucid never made sense to me. Um, now Lucid is, is valued more than, than Rivian, and, and this makes a lot more sense to me. But again, it, you know, when a stock just comes on like this, anything could happen. So again, no real signs of bottoming in Rivian, but that, that's the trade we're in. Next one on a firm here. We rolled this one down to the 45 strike in June, and we paid a little bit of a credit for this one. So I took about an $8,000 loss um, from the initial position I put on to be able to put this on just in case that we do go into recession and a firm falls down to 45 or 40 in the coming months. Lucid, I, I rolled down to the 29 strike put and I made a lot of money by rolling this one out. So I had a, a strangle at 35 and 55 for end of January and I rolled it up to 29 strike put for June, keeping the 55 strike call for the end of January. And um, I made a lot of money on this one. So uh, I collected a huge credit. It was about 15,000 or 20,000 extra that I uh, collected for this one. Roblox, I rolled down to the 60 strike put out to June. Uh, on net, I rolled down to the 70 strike put in June. Another one on firm, this one was the 50 strike put for a firm. And um, that one I, I made a lot of money on uh, net. You can see the position, you can see the value right now, it's worth $47,000 in premium. So the reason why is because it's so close to the money. What I've done is I've rolled all the premiums out to June and the, the thought process is that we're going to either bottom now or very close to a bottom and we're going to rotate back up by june or at least trade sideways until june and chop around up and down from now to june if we do that all of these premiums expire worthless and my account will get back over a million without tesla stock changing i was able to temporarily buy more time so i didn't have to take five hundred thousand in losses i took about a hundred thousand in losses to avoid taking five hundred thousand in losses and rolling out so that way I had more time to be correct or at least not aggressively wrong. Another one, the last one is on SPY. So I rolled this one. This was a 438 strike put that I had expiring at the end of January. And I rolled that position out to June down to the 40, 435 strike. I'm still, I still think we're going to end the year up for the SPY. And if we do that, that means that we're going to end the year at 480, 490, 500. But I have no idea what's going to happen in the next one, two, three, and four weeks. It could be crazy based on what the Fed says. So this spy one was, uh, I remember at one point, yeah, it said this was worth $100,000. So if I close this, I would have to pay a $100,000 loss, but uh, I rolled it out. And um, because of that, you know, re- the spy reversed and uh, ate up 20,000 in premium just like that after I rolled the position. So not uh, nothing's too bad. I have a 428,000 US in cash. And then I have those uh, Tesla shares. I also kept the bull call spread. It's the 2000 strike call, 2200 strike call call that I'm selling. Um, I bought the 2000 strike call, sold the 2200 strike call expiring January, 2024. Still confident in that. Still think that Tesla will be over $2,000 a share by January, 2024. And um, that that's obviously based on having over $20 per share in earnings for the year 2023 with a 100 PE puts us at a 2 trillion market cap. So as long as Tesla in 2023 averages $5 per share in earnings, then I am confident that for the end of 2023, January 2024, Tesla's valued at uh, 2,000 a share, keeping the PE of 100. If that one happens, then this will be in the profit by about uh, 420,000 US, and I'll be able to get 200 free shares of Tesla stock if this happens. That's that's the whole thought process behind that one. In terms of realize, it shows, it shows that I realized $281,000 in losses today, but it's because I had to roll the positions, so it closed out the positions and opened up the other ones, and basically all the premium got eaten, most of the premium got eaten up today on the reversal. Net net, like I said, for January, I was earning $100,000 if everything expired worthless, and everything is not expiring worthless. I had to roll positions, manage positions, and because of that, basically all of that is gone, and now, as long as these ones expire worthless, I'm making 10 
$10,000 for the month of January. However, I'm also forced now to be locked in until June with uh, some buying power tied up. So if uh, stocks don't trade higher from here, then I'm basically locked in from, from now till June. I have a few other accounts that I can trade on, but I'm not putting on any massive positions from now until June on this exact specific account. We don't know where the market's going, so I hope you all stayed, stayed safe out there. Um, just so you know, uh, like, you know, peak for me, I was uh, about 3 million, now um, below 2 million. So we went from 3 million to well below 2 million in uh, just a couple, week, couple weeks. I uh, hope your account's doing okay out there. And uh, let me know if you got any margin calls in the comments down below. So without further ado, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe for more videos just like this. I hope you appreciate the transparency. And I'll see you in the next one.